Hey everyone, I'm Lauren Gertsen. I'm a nutritionist and an author, and today I am joined by my personal hypnotherapist, Tracy Barrett Adams, and she's also a guest instructor for my How to Trust Your Body program. And we're gonna delve into how to use hypnotherapy for healing. Tracy, I'm so excited you could join me today. I'm super glad to be here. So this is a fun fact, but a lot of the guest instructors on my course are from all over the world, but we happen to live in the same neighborhood. <laughs> so we get to film this in person. Awesome, yes. So I'd love to talk about some of the misconceptions with hypnotherapy because before I started using hypnotherapy on my healing journey, um, I had seen it uh, at a state fair and there was somebody on the stage making people from the audience do crazy things for entertainment. Yeah. Well, hypnosis sometimes is perceived as mind control or sometimes is perceived as uh, the hypnotist having power over somebody. And that's not actually true. It's just a state of mind that can be utilized in some different ways. Everybody who gets up on stage in a hypnosis show is volunteering for that. So mm -hmm. they're kind of up for that. And what that hypnotic state is being utilized for there is to amplify their personality so that they are uh, the part of them that said, yeah, I want to get up on stage because it becomes even more uh, demonstrative. So maybe 40, 50 times more. And mm -hmm. Then the and they are also saying yes to everything the hypnotist says. They're they're giving permission for to take to take those suggestions. It, hypnosis is a state of uh, receptivity. So when we're creative and our unconscious mind, which is where creativity is, sparks uh, creativity, our mind, our conscious mind kind of gets out of the way, and we're receptive to that. Mm -hmm. So that's a state of natural hypnosis that we use. We don't necessarily usually do it on purpose. We flow into it, mm -hmm. um, and. The stage hypnosis that we, that it, although it looks kind of like mind control, it's really not. It's just really, it's just really heightened receptivity of that natural state. And in hypnotherapy, we use, uh, I will we use a client's heightened state of desire and to create that state of hypnosis just by asking the conscious mind to think about something over here so we have access to the unconscious mind. It's just a directed, purposeful creation of that hypnotic state. And in the conscious mind, this is where we can speak to the emotions, it's where the emotions are housed, it's where the imagination is, where the, all the creativity is, and where all the intuition is. And it's also where the sensor regulates uh, sensation, physical sensation, and the alarm system is, the body's alarm system, the fight or flight mechanism. And so when we're speaking directly to the unconscious mind, we can shift and change that a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that's where we can bring support for healing, right? Right. Support for healing, for feeling better. Mm. People who feel better, heal better. I mean, that sounds mm. sort of corny, but it is really true. We start by accessing a person's resource state to take them out of the alarm system. Because when, the, when we don't feel good, when we're hurting or when we're, we're ill, the alarm system chemistry of catecholamines of adrenaline and epinephrine and cortisol are flowing through the system. Mm -hmm. And that actually promotes inflammation. It actually promotes discomfort and it magnifies our, our awareness of feeling bad. Mm -hmm. So when we tap into the resource states and sort of adjust that fight or flight mechanism and, and get the, uh, the, the dopamine and the oxytocin and those neuro uh, peptides that work in our mm -hmm. favor start flowing, now we have access to our natural intuition that's going to help us uh, heal our body and I don't say I'm a healer at all mm -hmm. but sometimes but the body does have the capacity to heal itself we know that it does mm -hmm. when you get a cut you don't instruct that cut to heal your body knows how to heal itself and on the deeper level the body knows how to heal itself as well mm -hmm. so one of the most interesting things in our discussions was I learned your personal journey into hypnotherapy oh yeah this is such an, a great example of how hypnotherapy can have physiological effects yeah, well, one of the things that hypnotherapy can do is it, it, it is tap in, like I said, to that sensory gate in the, in the body. And when I was a little girl, I had had a bad experience with a dentist. As a little tiny girl, he was uh, not, a, not a kind person. And I just refused to go to the dentist in my, for years. And my mother finally found a dentist in the San Francisco Bay Area who practiced hypnosis in, as part of his dental practice. And... I would, didn't want anything to do with the shots. I was terrified of the shots and the Novocaine. And so he did dental work on me for about seven years without any Novocaine at all and lots of fillings, lots of other work. By just hypnosis, he created uh, a little button on my arm that when he pressed it, my arm, my, not my arm, but my mouth would go completely numb. And mm -hmm. when he pressed another, the button right below that, 
then I, I would stop salivating. My mouth would just dry up and then he pressed the other button and I would stop having any uh, peripheral blood flow to my mouth. So that means he, so he did some little extractions, no blood flow. Um, there's a dramatic story. I don't know if you may tell, but my, mm -hmm. um, my, it was the first time he'd really done dental work. He took a few sessions to set this all up. And in my mind, I'm just watching a little cartoon. My imagination was completely mm. in charge. And that's one way we might define hypnosis is when the imagination is in charge. I love you that. Know, um, and, and the imagination is, is affecting how we feel. And, and you know this happens already. We go, you go to see a movie and you mm -hmm. get involved and you kind of feel the thing. You empathize and you feel the things that the people in the movie are feeling. Well, in my mind, I'm watching a little cartoon. And I remember the dentist calling in my mother and the receptionist to come in and watch, like you said, like like it was a little show. And and he, um, this button to make me not salivate had been pressed, so I was completely dry. And he said, "Watch this," and he pressed the salivation button. And my mother, I had my eyes closed, but the mother and the receptionist just screamed because this saliva came just <laughs> shooting out of my mouth like a fountain. Apparently, when he pressed it to turn it back on. So working with uh, the sensations later, when I later on in my life developed migraine and. Mm they were woven through my life for quite a few years before I figured out that I could use hypnosis to interrupt the cycle. And um, I still have triggers, but I'm pretty good at avoiding them. And I'm also really have the skill set of interrupting them. For people who are dealing with um, more chronic things, though, that sensory shift in hypnosis, mm -hmm. whether it's by creating a numbing button or creating a just a shift in perception so that the unconscious mind is like no longer hearing it. Right. So it's like sometimes working with um, uh, using hypnosis for uh, any kind of physical awareness. It's almost like we just change the way the, the mind sees it, the way the conscious mind perceives it, like from a different angle. Hmm. Does that make sense? It does. So clients come to you for all different kinds of challenges. What are, what are the main focuses in your practice? Um, main focus would be physical pain. And often with neurological issues is where, I, is where I, I began working with migraine. And that's kind of where, because I've got a group of neurologists who refer to me mm -hmm. and uh, uh, functional medicine doctors who refer to me. I see also people for quite a bit for things that are chronic and that don't have a very good treatment. So things like fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. um, and... Um, quite a bit with degenerative neurological issues like multiple sclerosis. And I wouldn't say, I know I'm not claiming to heal those things or to mm -hmm. cure them at all, um, but people often have a really improved quality of life working with them and learn how to take control of those elements that they can control. And there's a lot more that they can control than they may think that they can because that's just hasn't been available to them. Right. So it's a tool. Hypnosis is a tool like any other. And it's just, I wouldn't say it's, I guess it's not a tool like any other. It's a tool it's just a, um, it gives us access to resources that we can't consciously just decide to have, mm -hmm. that the unconscious mind kind of opens up to that. Mm -hmm. But really the core of it is that the body knows how to heal herself. It does. The body, the body can heal and, and create comfort in space, mm -hmm. even where there's something going on, even where there's an injury. Mm -hmm. um, if we know that that's on its way to healing, we, there's no reason why we have to suffer so much with the injury mm -hmm. once it's healing. So even people who've had um, something chronic going on or, an, or an, a surgery that can actually begin to feel better and heal better much more quickly than it would uh, without that mind-body, taking advantage of that mind-body connection. That makes sense. So I am so lucky because I live in Seattle where your practice is and I'm an in-person client, but for people who don't live in this area, can they experience your work? Yeah, a couple of different ways. Mm -hmm. um, I do see clients online and mm -hmm. uh, have clients that I work with on over the internet in um, Mexico and in Florida right now and in Chicago and New York and in Europe a little bit. And it's just uh, the process doesn't change a lot from in-person mm -hmm. sessions to online sessions. The, there are a few other things to take into consideration, but I love working with people online uh, It's sometimes... Uh, in, in its own way, uh, more efficient people for people who haven't been feeling well because they don't have to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. and, Good uh, point. and then I also have, uh, m m have available recordings and things like that that often mm -hmm. really either come, enhance and compound the work of the actual sessions 
or can also be used independently to mm -hmm. do pre and shift. That's what I'm so excited to offer in the program because you're offering a, a recording to help yes. women tap into their intuition mm -hmm. through hypnosis. And I'm so excited to offer this to you guys and share this. So Tracy, again, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you and, for having me. And for being a guest instructor on the How to Trust Your Body program. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It's great to be here. Thank you.